Let's have a look at the logo of the Swiss telecommunications in the base of Faro. First of all, the company is a real conglomerate, immense powerful with a surplus of wealth and finance, making them possible to speculate and invest worldwide, uh, just as a Swiss bank. And they probably belong to the Swiss Templar banks, the Swiss Nazi Templar banks, to whom in fact all banks worldwide belong to as they were the first banks at all. When Octogon of the Alps got founded on August 1st, 1291, and the Templar's treasure came to the safety of the red and white United Kingdom of Pharaoh. And then they went viral and expanded worldwide. And in that Swisscom logo, there are the three colors of the three crowns. The white royal house of Perhet, of Upper Egypt in the middle, and the red house of Per Tasser of Lower Egypt around and showing the same waves as on the crowns themselves. So there's absolutely no doubt about that. As Switzerland is Pharaoh's base anyway. You know. So here, even the waves here, you see on the red crown here, the uh, of the Per Tasser or the, also called the Red House, like a Red Royal House, which I explain in this video here on my other channel. Even these waves here, are, are you can find them in the Swisscom logo. And it's being seen from the top, you see, from here. So it's the red around and the white in the middle, you know. And then it also, and this is the, uh, the White House, as, as the White House in the United States. This is where the White House is from, actually. It's all pharaonic, you know. And the White House, that's um, uh, Ek Echonaton, you know. If you look at the Obama, where well, he looks like Echonaton. Well, that, that's in the south. That's Upper Egypt in the south of Egypt. And there were two kingdoms, and they, you know, they had strife amongst each other, and they just got together, and they made the United Kingdom. And... Out of that, the two colors of the Swiss flag. Well, I show it all in this video. And then in the Swisscom logo, there's the war crown. Oh. Showing uh, um, face down. All the elements are there. And I'll explain it to you. So here you can see it. The red and the white crown is seen from above. And... Um, the white crown in the middle, even these waves are in it, which you can see on the on the red crown. And here is the blue crown, which is uh, facing down, the war crown. So, white and red are shown from the top of the crowns, and blue shows the blue war crown from the side facing down. Then why that blue war crown in an apparent peaceful affair of telecommunications? Well, I learned in military school that the two most important things in an army and in a war are logistics and even more the signalers. Called the Signal Corps in the US Army. Or the Royal Corps of Signals in the British Army. Because without proper signalers or today's telecommunications, the chain of command can't pass down Pharaoh's order. Like in that pharaonic red and white chessboard without the hand connecting the brain with the pieces. This is how in history small armies defeated huge armies ten times as big. Because it's better to have twice the signaler power and half the gunpowder, then the other way around, and for logistics the same thing. Being also the very reason that the Germans lost the Battle of Stalingrad, because they merely replaced proper logistics with pillaging and stealing from the local population what could be found to eat. Which is called in proper terms a parasite army. Well, no wonder, because the Swiss were in command with their 17th century 30-year war mercenary tradition and apparent experience, commanding Hitler, who never listened to his own 
generals because he got his orders from the Swiss generals. Only modern armies don't work that way anymore, eh, Swissy? Even with your Swiss Blitzkrieg. Soldiers need chow, otherwise they stick their hands up when smelling the enemy's kitchen down the lines. This is, in fact, in military terms concerning the setup of an army only, the biggest difference between the American army of World War II and the German Nazi army. The Americans brought food and logistics to their own soldiers, and even to their enemies when defeated. Whereas the Germans under Swiss Octogon command just robbed it where they could, leaving starvation to millions, even stealing the milk for the babies. Wasting all their logistics on Holocaust trains and bringing gold and art collections into the motherland in the Alps instead of feeding their own soldiers. But this was all planned by the Swiss mastermind and their Templar Octogon idea of mid-late's warfare based upon pillaging armies. And for proper logistics you need an excellent signal corps. Therefore Pharaoh's blue war crown in the Swisscom logo. Here you can even see the, um, the Templar's coat of arms a bit simplified. It is a coat of arms. You can all see it. There's neither strategy nor tactical retreats if you have no proper signal core. I mean, what's a microscopic virus without the incredible fast intel of where to attack and destroy an entire organism billions of times bigger? And neither you want your own military company destroyed by your own friendly fire, which in army slang we call a blue on blue. <laughs> Well, why blue when everybody is dressed up in green? Well, a blue and on blue represents Pharaoh's blue war crown attacked by the same blue war crown. That's a blue on blue. But only few among the top brass headshed know this. Only the blue blooders, in fact. And there she was yesterday, June 23rd, 2015, in Germany. Wearing the blue war crown, coming to discuss the Russia crisis with her own krauts. Meaning war is imminent now, signaling the blue war crown to all Pharaoh's blue brothers. And do I have to tell you again what the checkerboard red and white flowers mean of Pharaoh's United Kingdom? You really want to explain me that to you? And then the red carpet, meaning setting foot on the territory of the Red House of Per Tasser of Lower Egypt by the royal bloodline of the White House Per Het, symbolizing their welcome. When Roman armies under Pharaoh's command conquered northern Europe, installing Pharaoh's aristocracy all over, their code was to say, being blue-blooded, meaning to be part of the invading armies of the Blue War Crown, subjecting Europe and the Europeans. And of course, an important part of their signalling during their crusade over Europe were all the secret symbols carved in stone at the front of their houses only. As I've shown you in my videos, The Pharaoh Show and Octagon, The Empire of Darkness. And most of that has now been replaced by telecommunications and therefore the blue crown of war in the Swisscom logo represents the war on Europe and in fact on all peoples of this planet. Except the Swiss, of course. It says the, their main center is in Warblauven. That's just around the corner from where we are here in Bern. And you see, it shows, you know, they want us to show like radio waves, but it isn't. It's the Freemason Vesica Peitsch is forming the oval, like in the Oval Office, where the, uh, 
the White House crown is of um, Upper Egypt. And this is, of course, this is a part of a chain, meaning, you know, the all rings, as in the uh, Guinness logo, meaning we form a chain and we're always together standing behind each other, you know, all for one and, uh, and one for all, as in the Swiss Parliament. And you, stupid Europeans and stupid mankind, you will be always standing alone.